Hey everybody, it's time for another rant video. Now, normally I wouldn't show off my own personal Facebook and all that. And obviously I'm gonna say, you know, the standard spiel of don't go harass, you know, somebody. I'm not condoning that or anything. I'm just making this video to prove a point. Um, I'm a part of this group on Facebook and I know this is two rant videos in a row. I'm kind of just making videos as they come which is why there's also going to be videos only once a week now on Wednesdays. So that just seems to be the easiest way for me to keep a good constant schedule is to give myself a wide enough gap that until my personal office is done, um, I don't have to worry about an upload schedule of Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and just enough videos to fill that space. Once my office is done, then I might do like Tuesday, Friday or something like that. Anyway. So, obviously, don't go harass anybody, but I'm in this uh, cell phone group that's owned by the cell phone parts company Mobile Centrics. Great company, great place to buy cell phone parts. I wouldn't say, you know, they're the highest quality, the best bar none place to get parts because there's thousands upon thousands of other parts suppliers on the internet. But as far as working and not having defective parts when ordering, it seems like they are the best supplier at the moment um, to get cell phone parts from that aren't going to come back to you in three to six months because of a defect. So with that, they own this group and somebody in this group asked, is there any way to put Cody on an iPhone without having to jailbreak it? Very simple question. I don't know if a lot of you guys keep up with jailbreaking, but jailbreaking on iOS is, it's not dead. Don't let anybody tell you it's dead. It's difficult, and I believe you can't do it on current iOS version. So if we go to jailbreak FAQ, and we do this you can see different that is one terrible sounding car so you can see like latest jailbreak releases solutions for signing re-signing apps and certificates revoked complete ios modding guide jailbreak news guide compatibility there's nintendo switch stuff here now which is cool i mean there's a ton of stuff to read through and jailbreaking is nowhere near dead i hate the people with motorcycles around here they are so loud let me find the page real quick that specifically shows ios versions for what can and can't be jail can and can't i was super close to it i did not need to pause this but that's okay so as you can see here iphone 6s can be jailbroken all the way up through 14.7 beta iPhone SE, the Gen 1 is the same way, all the way up to the iPhone S all the way through the betas because it's a hardware uh, jailbreak. Somebody found an exploit in the physical hardware so they can actually go in. Go in. I saw Taurine and went going. <laughs> you can actually go in with CheckRain and jailbreak that for no matter what iOS version it's on. The XR, it stops at 14.3 and all the way up to the 12 Pro Max. If you're anywhere higher than 14.3, you cannot jailbreak. So, same with iPads. iPads are basically the same way. Um, there's no M1 jailbreaks yet at all. And there are people that still work on jailbreaks. Don't get me wrong. It's not dead by any means. It's just the people that are good at this keep getting hired by these companies. So, the guy who... Uh, managed Magisk for Android devices got hired by Google, but part of his hiring stipulation was he can no longer support and develop Magisk. So eventually Magisk is going to die. It's not going to work forever. And I'm actually having problems with it right now on my OnePlus Nord N10 on the newest version of Android 11 supported for this device. Certain stuff just doesn't work. So Jailbreaking isn't dead. 
I know people that are walking around with jailbroken 12s. I know a single person with an iPhone 12 Pro that's jailbroken. Um, there's plenty of people walking around with jailbroken devices, and it's not a huge deal. I mean, even tvOS, you can still jailbreak all the way through the betas. Um, Apple TVs, you can jailbreak. Uh, I wanted to see Apple Watches. There's no jailbreaks. There was right here for this one, but I think that's pretty much it. There hasn't been much done with watches. I don't think anybody really cares about the watches. So, jailbreaking isn't dead. Now, let's get into the point of this video. Hold on, I want to make sure that notification doesn't pop up and I give information I shouldn't give. So, why this video came to be. Is there any way to put Cody on an iPhone without having to jailbreak it? The answer is probably yes. And actually, I meant to find an example of how before starting this video recording. Sorry. So, while I can't pull it up, I know Tweakbox app has Cody on it that you can install. It is a third-party app store. You add the icon to your uh, iOS launcher and just click on it. It opens a uh, basically a website app. It's nothing more than a link, really. So if you like, if you click install now, you'll see it will try to install it, which is not going to work because I'm on a Windows computer. Um, and you open up the app and you can see different apps or you can sideload it. Uh, you can basically see different apps that they support, whether they are non-iOS compliant apps that can't be put on the Apple App Store or modified apps like GPS spoofing Pokemon Go. You just have to install a certificate every time you install an app to allow the sideloading of the app to be installed. Third-party app stores, there's currently court battles going on with Apple to a try to allow third-party app stores and third-party payment methods for uh, in-app payments. But as of right now, you still have to basically risk it. There's also Panda Helper. I don't really recommend Panda Helper. I've messed with it before. I don't know if Cody is on here, but like YouTube Plus Plus is Clash of Clans with mods. Pokemon Go with mods is on here. I'm sure... This does have Cody on it somewhere. The search. Kiddo. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Cody is right here. You can install Cody right from Panda Helper. I don't recommend these methods. These are kind of dangerous. The app may work for a week, and that's about it, before Apple rips down the install certificate because they have that ability. The only way to really get away with it is to have your own private install certificate and just install it that way but that's going to cost you i believe 200 bucks a year so if you can jailbreak though you can sideload the app clean and clear without an install certificate and you're good it doesn't matter you can just download the ipa file and install it with like ifunbox or 3u tools or something like that so what got me kind of mad was somebody responded with this message and said there's no such thing as jailbreaking anymore. You may be able to sideload it if you have the IPA. Best bet is to use an Android or Fire device if you seriously want to use Cody. By the way, Cody has been dead for you. This guy literally has ego in his name. He needs to be knocked down a peg. Um, Cody's not dead. I actually paused my movie that I was watching. I was watching Fast and Furious 9 in 1440p on my jailbroken fire stick through my 4K Roku TV right now. It's paused right now. Working 2021. No problems. Cody's not dead. Also, there's no such thing as jailbreaking anymore. Hmm. Tell that to, you know, this that literally says iPhone 12 Pro Max 14.3, you can jailbreak. So, 
I obviously responded, um, don't listen to this guy, and then I explained why, uh, I explained, you know, exactly how to go about it if they wanted to go about it. And he got me with a response of, you just proved my point, we aren't walking around with outdated devices, the jailbreak is dead, we haven't the public released jailbreak in forever, not to mention how hard it is to maintain a jailbreak, it's not worth it. Jailbreaks are not difficult to maintain. It's all up to the user to just not update their device. And, you know, as I stated, you can literally jailbreak an iPhone jailbreak iPhone 12s if it's on the correct firmware. I'm still going to say not to listen to you because you're calling it dead when it isn't. There are methods. If the OP wants to do it, don't lie to them and say it isn't possible or it's dead. Just tell them the correct information. Let them make the decision of what they want to do with their own device. And this is just an example of a big problem with right to repair from the business perspective or from like Apple's perspective. This is literally controlling what somebody else wants to do with their device is lying to them and saying they can't do it when they can, if they want to. So I literally called them out and I said, you are literally equal to these companies fighting against right to repair. You're trying to control what somebody else does with their device by giving them no information on how to do what they want to do. And then he's like, why is everybody responding to me? You should be responding to the original poster. I would never encourage anyone to jailbreak an Apple device in 2021. The landscape isn't as friendly as it was 10 years ago. Get an Android if you want to use Kodi. Yes, it's going to be much easier for the general user to use a Kodi or to install Kodi on an Android device and maintain it that way. But Kodi is not easy to use. Your general person that just like isn't tech savvy like i don't want anybody to think she's dumb because she knows what she's doing around on a phone just needs help sometimes but even my girlfriend if i was like here's cody with no sources set up find a way to stream your own movie she wouldn't be able to do it she doesn't know how to find active sources that currently work on cody to stream fast and furious 9 like i'm doing on top of that i've shown her how to sideload apps and just download them off of google chrome she doesn't trust it I understand that logic. So he was like, why is everybody responding to me? And I was like, my only response to you was to say that you're giving false information and that you have no idea what you're talking about. The rest of my response was all directed towards the OP, which was this really long response. Long story short, no easy way about it. And from my perspective, I will always encourage jailbreaking and rooting. I will always encourage the ability to unlock a bootloader for software repair. Like he said, in 2021, yes, it's more dangerous because people are finally starting to go at these mobile devices and making viruses for them that didn't exist three, five, ten years ago. But like I said right here, I don't care if it's 2050, 2021, or 2008. I will forever encourage jailbreaking, rooting, or uh, bootloader unlocking because it gives you full control of your device. You bought this device from Apple. You bought this device from Samsung. You bought this device from Motorola. You bought it from LG. You bought it from some guy on eBay for all I give a damn or from a store like mine that I work for. You own that device. It's yours. You should be allowed to do what you want with it. There shouldn't be, it should be just as easy as it is with a Pixel device on every single phone on the planet to unlock that bootloader and do whatever the hell you want with that phone. It should be that easy to do a software repair on a bricked device. I have a Pixel 4a 5G at work that doesn't boot because it comes up with the Qualcomm uh, 9008 COM port, uh, bricked device someone flashed the wrong boot.img uh, driver request for it. And if I try to install a Qualcomm 9008 driver, you can't get them for the Pixels. Not for the Pixel 4a 5G. It has never been released. It's never been leaked. 
So I can't in, I can't fix that bricked device because it doesn't show up in fastboot because somebody else flashed the wrong boot.img. They could have flashed a boot.img from a Samsung device to a Pixel and that's what killed it. If they unlocked the bootloader and they did it wrong, that's why that device doesn't boot anymore. If I could simply go in and just plug that phone in and that driver was public and those Qualcomm tools were public instead of Google keeping them behind some locked door that it's not supposed to be public for, like it sometimes is with Motorola devices and stuff, or OnePluses, I would be able to fix that device instead of having to waste two weeks waiting for Google to send it back to me for a warranty repair. It's such a waste of time. I'm hoping these right to repair laws that are about to be put in place somehow even unintentionally uh, fix these issues. And yeah, the best bet is get a Galaxy device. I mean, a Galaxy Tab SMT290 is stupid cheap. Uh, <laughs> uh, Galaxy SMT290. If you want it with uh, cellular service, you can get them the SMT295, I believe it is, is the one that has uh, cellular data. I don't remember exactly. One of them has cellular data, one of these models. These 8-inch Galaxy Tab A's, 99 bucks. I sell them for 90 or even 75 Like, it's a no-brainer to just get one of these because it's so easy to install. You want to install Kodi on this? Kodi on Android. Guess what? It's literally on the Play Store. Kodi is on the Play Store for Android. If Apple didn't have such a grip, we wouldn't have people like this that are just so stupid and reply basically lying to somebody about how they could use their device if they want to use it that way. Oh my god, I hate people. Oops. <laughs> That's a car I was looking at. I actually did not know Cody was on the Play Store. Uh, I was thinking you'd still have to at least sideload it. But it's people like this that, Jesus Christ, it's people like this that piss me off. They are exactly the same as these companies that are lying to people and saying, oh, there's a security risk if, you know, somebody replaces your screen, someone could steal your data. Of course they could. But look at Lewis Rossman's YouTube channel. Just for a second, Lewis Rossman. Like, this guy's amazing. I would love to meet him at least once. Ooh, I need to watch this. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, authorized repair is crap. Um, I authorized repair. This video is amazing. It gives so much information about why authorized repair is no better or worse than bringing it to my shop, mailing me the device. In all honesty, the people that Apple hires to do those repairs in those places, they're actually teaching them to do the repairs incorrectly. When there was the audio IC issue on the iPhone 7s, you know how Apple fr fixed that stupid issue on some of those phones? I wish I had my webcam plugged in because I'd literally show you I have a device. I have an iPhone 7 with that repair done to it by an Apple authorized repair. It was a little, if, you have, if you've ever taken a graphics card apart or seen someone take one apart or seen a computer taken apart, there's these little gray squares that are called heat pads that transfer the heat from the chip to a piece of metal or something like that, a heat sink. Sometimes they use those pads rather than using thermal paste because it's easier and cleaner. Apple just would tell their repair technicians to take one or two of those pads, put it on the touch IC, and then close the phone and use the pressure of 
the main board of the iPhone 7 being screwed in to the frame of the phone to fix the audio IC or the uh yeah the audio IC and that would cause contact instead of doing it correctly and using Apple's a trillion dollar company I worked for a company that was maybe worth a couple hundred grand to a million and they had a $65,000 reball machine that would reball those kinds of chips automatically based on a profile that just somebody had to code once and then you could just funnel feed in uh the correct chip it would still be up to a single person to put the chip in at the correct orientation for their machine to see it but the machine would then uh and also put in the motherboard you're working on at the correct uh angle and everything but there were like laser lasers to line it up and stuff like that so you would put the board in, then it would use a small suction cup to pick up that IC and hold on to it and actually solder it all back together all by itself. And it would even desolder the old one and then it would just be up to the technician to clean up the area of the uh, all the flux and just use some alcohol to clean it. And then the machine would just do the reball automatically. It was a $65,000 machine. You're telling me Apple can't afford to have a lineup of those machines and spend even... It's a trillion dollar company. If they spent a million dollars on those machines, they wouldn't even notice. Like, come the hell on. And even with the touch IC issues on the iPhone 6s, same kind of repair. It would just take those little gray things put them in there and use force to keep the phone together. Really stupid. But I can go on and on and about stuff like this. The whole point in this video is I hate people who give false information And just don't know what they're talking about, but then they answer anyway. It's exactly the same premise behind Apple saying, oh, you shouldn't do this with your phone. It's my phone. Let me freaking do it. Or Samsung being like, oh, yeah, we removed OEM unlock, so you can't unlock your bootloader in America. Why? My friend in the UK can do it. I just don't know. Like... I'm really hoping this right to repair thing starts to turn things around. But we know these billion and trillion dollar companies. Well, only one of them is a trillion. These multi-billion dollar companies can pay lawyers to just sit and read through the laws for like three weeks straight and it doesn't even hurt their pocketbooks. And then find a loophole. And that's exactly what's going to happen. The Paul Daniels software that this guy talks about all the time, I believe is somewhat considered illegal. And I think the guy's even uh, been sued over the software. He's not stealing anything. It's, he's making the layout to the boards himself. Right to repair should fix that. I hope. But I don't know. This was just, you know, it, it, I just hate people who answer. And he even proved his point. This guy literally proved the point that he knew he was giving false information. Just tell them what they want to know. And let them make their own decision on what they do with the device. That's all they have. That's all you have to do. Let them make the decision. If they end up breaking their device or uh, something like that, offer to fix it at a discount. You're still making some money. I do that. I've done that a couple times. I'll have somebody that's like, hey, I want to fix my device. Or actually, it was uh, one of the old computer shops I worked for, which, by the way, I got a release video on this, uh, on this specific group. We had somebody come in and buy a screen from us saying that they knew what they were doing. We provided them with one of those little $5 screwdriver bags that come with the uh, screens from some companies. And we got everything, you know, 
we had the guy sign a piece of paper stating that he would pay for the labor time if he had to come back because he broke his own phone during the repair or couldn't complete it on his own. So, he was completely fine with that. Why not just do something like create repair kits, have somebody sign something that states, if I can't do it and I have to come back, I pay for the labor time. Just do that with somebody, at least. Like, if you're going to give them false information, why not turn it into a potential sale? I mean, I get it, this is on Facebook, so it's probably somebody on one side of the country versus somebody on the other. Can't really do that. But, I don't know, I'm, I'm just going to keep talking if I keep recording. And this is already 25 minutes long. I think I got my point across. If you made it this far into the video... I'm trying to buy a new car, and I'm potentially trying to sell the Volkswagen Golf that I really don't want to sell, but I kind of have to. I want either a Nissan Juke, a Nismo Edition specifically, even though I know even just like an all-wheel drive version is going to be the same car, just minus the tune. I want either a Nissan Juke or um, a Honda CRZ or love another fiat but like a 500x or a 500l i'm looking for something that's a little bit more family oriented or also can fill up with 87 and 93 all the time and gets better gas mileage what kind of cars would you guys recommend let's see why let, let's confuse people in the comments be like wow this video is about somebody installing something on their phone and getting false information why are we talking about cars in the comments section Let's confuse some people. What kind of car would you recommend? Y'all seem to know kind of what kind of cars I like because you've seen videos of the Fiat, you've seen videos of the Golf, you've seen videos of the Jetta, you've seen videos of the Prelude. What kind of cars would you guys recommend? I'm also thinking maybe instead just getting like another Mark IV Golf because I have aftermarket headlights and taillights already for it. So it would already be modified as soon as I get the car. As soon as I get home, I would throw taillights and headlights on it. Boy, do I love my LED taillights for that for a black Volkswagen Mark IV Golf. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I think I'm going to go with a Mark IV Golf or like a 2000 Honda Civic just to get something cheap to get me through the winter and fix my credit. But who knows? What do you guys recommend? Peace out.